Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. We got some long shot bets for you. NFL awards season, it's about a year away. It doesn't mean we can't make some money on it right now. What's up, Jim? Yeah, it's all good, Greg. I think the thinking here, for me at least, is that if you're going to lock up money for this long, you better take some long shots and see what happens. Because if I'm betting Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson, their odds, odds probably aren't going to move too much before week one. So let's take some long shots, guys, who may have shorter odds once season arrives. And then if they do pan out like Lamar Jackson did last year, we can benefit quite a bit. So shooting for some longer ones here. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm excited. I'm just waiting uh, for sports to kind of get back into it. The NFL looks like they're going full steam ahead. Obviously, NASCAR is coming back. Golf is coming back. And hopefully, the other sports aren't far behind. But let's talk about some of these longer shot bets that we want to place. And we're going to go with your boy to start this off in Denver. We talked a lot about how that Denver offense improved, that they knew what they had to do in order to keep up pace with the Chiefs. They bring in Melvin Gordon. They draft Jerry Judy. And that means you're buying Drew Locke at plus eight thousand to be the nfl mvp yeah i think that the reason that we want to buy into drew lock is just because situation matters a lot for a quarterback and when you can get a quarterback with 80 to 1 odds who has pieces around him as good as what drew lock has right now it's at least intriguing and we can question drew lock's talent all we want which we should because our sample on him in the nfl is very small he faced a lot of really poor competition and he was a second round pick those are all things that are working against him but now he's throwing to Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Noah Fans, Albert Okwebunam. There are so many guys in this offense who bring, who can help make up for mistakes the quarterback may make. And I think that's a good thing for Drew Locke. But there's also some good volatility in what Drew Locke does. He is willing to throw the ball downfield. He can do so well because he has a big arm and he can kind of run a bit. He's pretty athletic, about similar to Justin Herbert from an athleticism perspective, and could add some from that perspective as well. The issue with Drew Locke is that you need a, an MVP bet to have the potential to at least go to the playoffs. And I think the good thing here with Drew Locke is that not only did the Broncos beef up their pass catchers, but they also added some really big pieces via trade prior to the NFL draft as well. So Looking at Drew Locke, the odds that he does win MVP probably aren't that big, but I think they're better than the implied odds 80 to 1, especially when you consider how good the talent is around him. You know, again, our sample is small on him, but the pass catchers he has now are so much better than what he did last year, and he has at least shown flashes at times of having really high upside. So I think we're going to swing with the fences here, give Drew Locke a try, and see if the Broncos can't su surprise in 2020. The pieces around Drew Locke, they look really, really good. And as you mentioned, the MVP, especially the quarterback spot, relies on so many of those other offensive weapons. They're building it in Denver. They can keep up pace and surprise people in the AFC West. 8 one well, that's too big of a number for us to let go. We like that with Drew Locke right now. But he's not the only quarterback that's a long shot that Jim is betting on because when you can bet on a Jet to win the MVP – you have to, according to Jim Sonis. It's his team. It's Sam Darnold, 100 to 1. Why not, Jim? Yeah, I think that's kind of where I'm at here, too, is why not? And I think that between these two quarterbacks we discussed, I like the value on Sam Darnold more than I like the value on Drew Locke because Darnold was a top three pick in the NFL draft. He is very young, and those are things that you like as far as making progression and going to the next level. This is also Sam Darnold's third year in the NFL, which should give him better acclimation to this league. This is his second year with Adam Gase. And we can question Adam Gase all you want, but the continuity around having a second year in that same offense should be a benefit for Sam Darnold. Now, with Drew Locke, we talk a lot about the situation. And I think that sneakily Sam Darnold's situation has gotten a lot better too, specifically because of the offensive line. They've kind of taken a similar approach to what the Buffalo Bills did last year, where they threw a lot at it in free agency, creating a lot of competition, especially along the interior. So the interior is going to be better, but there's also a chance to get better at left tackle with Mekhi Becton being there. Maybe George Fant or Chuma Edoga can step up and play right tackle. So the offensive line will be a lot better. But even with a bad offensive line in the past, we have seen sparks from Sam Darnold. We've already forgotten about what he did over the final four games in 2018. He also had some good stretches at times last year as well. This is for a guy who's entering, you know, he's still very young and entering his third year in the league. So we've seen flashes from Sam Darnold. The talent around him is better. They've added Rashad Perriman and Denzel Mims to replace Robbie Anderson at wide receiver. He gets Chris Herndon and Ryan Griffin for a full year, and he gets a second year in his system. 
I think that all bodes well for Sam Darnold. He's in a big market, which should get him a lot of name value. This division is pretty wide open where anyone could win it. That could help the Jets out as well. So I think that between Locke and Darnold, I prefer Sam Darnold at 101 just because both these guys are in situations that are better than they were last year and their odds don't necessarily reflect that. The situation on offense is definitely better for Sam Darnold. The second year in a system, usually better for a quarterback. But what I like best about his chances is the fact that New England doesn't have Tom Brady anymore. And you have the Bills there looking good, acquiring Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen, hopefully taking another step. But if things go right for the Jets, they can make some noise in the AFC East. The offensive line, as you mentioned, Jim, very much improved here. And as long as you make a little bit of noise, then the MVP conversation, well, it starts in earnest. If Sam Darnold can have a big-time year in Adam Gase's offense, 100-1 to is way too big of a long shot for him. I like that bet a lot. I like it more than Drew Locke. But perhaps my favorite long shot bet that you're on today is the Defensive Player of the Year award. And Miles Garrett is that at 33 to 1. Miles Garrett had a fantastic year last year before it ended, well, terribly, of course, in Pittsburgh. Now he's back. He's been reinstated. He's going to start the year, hopefully get his head on straight. But he certainly has the talent to be the Defensive Player of the Year. And at 33 to 1, like I said, it's my favorite bet here on today's show. Yeah, I think that you look back to last year, like you said, Miles Garrett was in contention to win this award then before the suspension came down. He had 10 sacks already before that suspension began. That's a year after he had 13 and a half sacks the year before. Miles Garrett, a former first overall pick, has shown to be a majorly effective player in the NFL. The thing I like about Miles Garrett, too, if we're talking about awards betting, is that T or voters do tend to value team success and the Cleveland Browns offensively have made a lot of gains this year. So the odds that they do well enough for players on their team to get consideration for awards betting goes up the better that they get on offense. And I think that they have done exactly that, which benefits Miles Garrett, who is 33 to one to win defensive player of the year. He is entering his fourth year. He has shown sack productivity, the ability to put up flashy stats in the past and it's going to be a team that gets a lot of buzz because of the Browns, and they always get a lot of buzz as well. So the best player on a potentially improving team who has the ability to post a lot of really good stats, that's all really good for Miles Garrett. Now, if he were a bit shorter than this, I might be, I might be hesitant because maybe voters shy away based on the incident last year, and maybe they don't want to back someone, given you know the, the, the negativity around Miles Garrett's name, but I think at 33 to one, that's long enough to account for those concerns on my end for a player who is just so gosh darn talented on what could be a really fun team. We've been calling the Browns a potentially really fun team for a good decade now. And as you mentioned, the hype surrounding them, uh, it usually is bigger than the actual well, team success. But if this team is successful, and Kevin Stefanski's run-based attack allows for close games and Miles Garrett to be a force on defense, well, it's well worth putting it down at 33-1. to 1. Yeah, there's bad juju there. See what I did? Bad vibes as well. But Miles Garrett has the talent as a former first overall pick to certainly become the defensive player of the year. And at 33-1, to 1, you don't want to miss it. Let's, now let's move to the comeback player of the year, where this list, not as big or as lengthy as some of these other categories, you like Matt Stafford here. Only 9-1 to 1 plus 900 to get him at. And, and Stafford, again, has the talent. He had a good year last year, especially from a fantasy perspective, uh, playing for Matt Patricia. Who are the other players that are involved in this mix along with Matt Stafford that allows you to like him here at 9 1? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this award in general uh, because it is pretty ambiguous. There are a lot of ways you could go with it. And it's just, it's kind of amorphic. And so I generally don't want to enter this market. However, I think that the odds on Matthew Stafford being as long as they are, are kind of what draws me here. And it kind of harkens back to what we discussed with Drew Locke and Sam Darnold, at least with Sam Darnold, where the division's a little bit open for, uh, up for grabs because the Packers made some weird offseason moves. The Vikings traded away Stephon Diggs and lost a lot of talent defensively. The Bears are the Bears. So there is some room for the, the Lions to outperform expectations, which is good for Matthew Stafford. There's also the thing that Matthew Stafford, before he got hurt last year, was really good. He was the fourth most efficient passer on a per drop back basis based on number of fires metrics before he went down with that injury. That Daryl Bevel scheme of play action and let it rip was working out really well for Matthew Stafford. He also plays at doors, which I like because it does help inflate his stats, and he has some good talent around him. So I think that there is some mobility here for the Lions to outperform expectations. That bodes well for him. And Stafford has shown he can put up good individual stats. I kind of think that's what I want 
in order to enter into this market. Now, again, it depends on the number. If you can't get Matthew Stafford at 9-1, to one, which is what you can get at FanDuel Sportsbook, I'd probably just avoid this award entirely. But if you can get someone like Stafford at this number, then I'm willing to bite just because we've seen the ability to put up really good numbers. He should qualify for the award because he missed so much time last year. And I think that there is a lot of, a lot of, a lot of paths for Stafford to be in contention here. So Stafford, the one guy who can really get me to bite in what is a largely pretty unattractive award. The players that qualify are relatively arbitrary, right? Like you don't know who's going to step up, who – really comes back from something. Stafford comes back from the major back injury last year. And as a quarterback, if he could perform, like you said, at the same level that he did last season, he would probably be a favorite here. And nine to one, it's worth taking a shot on. It's a tough award to predict. None of these other ones aren't. But this one, we don't even know the, the categories, essentially, right? We don't know all the players that will be involved, at least for some of these other ones that are going up after the next couple of our offensive and defensive rookie of the year. We know who the rookies are. We don't necessarily know the players that are coming back from anything quite yet. Matthew Stafford, 9-1, and though. A good bit of any, especially being a quarterback. Let's move on to Offensive Rookie of the Year. We talked um, a lot about the winners and losers and the players that stood out and stock up, stock down, coming out of the draft. But one player that we both liked a lot was Cam Akers in a position to really be successful in his rookie season. You can get him to be the Offensive Rookie of the Year at 20-1 to right now, which is really good odds because he's in a really good offense with a team that has already shown success running the football. In fact, they had a potential MVP at that spot. So maybe Ken Akers could be the rookie of the year. Yeah, I definitely think so, especially at 20 to one, because of a lot of the reasons you mentioned. And I think that when you look at the Rams decision-making, that tells you a lot about what they think about Cam Akers as a running back, because they let Todd Gurley go for contract issues. But you look back to last year, Malcolm Brown never really got a ton of work, despite the fact they were trying to conserve Todd Gurley. Daryl Henderson was inactive down the stretch last year, even in week 17, where they had literally nothing to play for. Daryl Henderson did not play for that entire game effectively. So that kind of tells you where they're at with him. That means that Cam Akers can come in and be the starter on day one. He can be the starter on day one for a team that I think has a better offensive line and a better offensive scheme than perception because they really performed poorly last year. But part of that was injuries. They got better as the year went along. They got new talent in there. And I think that adding back those guys who were hurt should give them a good competition level for this upcoming year. So I think the situation for Cam Akers is not all that bad. We saw at Florida State, he was able to catch passes. He was able to pretty, be pretty effective despite a bad offensive line there as well. He should go to the Rams here and be pretty heavily involved in this offense. The thing that I like about the Rams too is they're going to have to score some points this year, which bodes well for Cam Akers because that defense, they ignored it. Uh, for, the, for the second round, they went with Cam Akers and Van Jefferson and they lost a lot of talent defensively. Yeah, I mean, Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald are awesome, but they've got a lot of holes still defensively. And I think the Rams offense is going to put up a lot of points. That could benefit Cam Akers from a, a numbers and a statistics perspective. So he is a, a high-profile position on a team that should get a lot of notoriety for better or for worse, and on a team that's going to have to score points. And I expect his role to be pretty good from day one. A lot of things line up really well for Cam Akers. And I think that at 20-1, to 1, a really good number to get for a running back who has a lot of talent is, and is in a better situation than I think the perception would allow. The Rams ignored the defense. They ignored the offensive line. Instead, they went with weapons. Cam Akers is certainly qualifying as a weapon on a team that, as you mentioned, ignored Daryl Henderson, ignoring our boy Malcolm Brown, and allowing Cam Akers to hopefully step up, step into a starting role, or at least a major role in this Rams offense, and be successful. This is the first pick that the Rams had all week, and they used it on a guy that is going to play immediately. It was a couple of years ago that Todd Gurley was certainly in the conversation to be the NFL MVP, and those knee issues began. Why can't Cam Akers at least be in the conversation to be Rookie of the Year? He can, and he will. One last award we want to get to, and that is the Defensive Rookie of the Year. This one's always a little bit tougher, so let's go with a name we know, and that is Trevon Diggs, the younger brother of Trevon Diggs, who spurred Maryland, that bastard. But nevertheless, Trevon Diggs in a spot in his rookie season to at least have some success initially. Yeah, when you can go to Bama, it's hard for me to fault someone for skipping out on Maryland. So Trevon Diggs, and obviously it worked out pretty well for him, but there's also a couple of big pluses here for Trevon Diggs when it comes to award betting. The first one is that he plays for the Dallas Cowboys. That means he's going to get national attention from day one. The Cowboys, as we've talked about before, are a good team which should inflate voters' willingness to vote for this guy. And that's a good thing for Trevon Diggs. Also, 
he's projected to start right away. With Byron Jones being gone, the Cowboys had a pretty major need at corner, and now Trevon Diggs can step in on day one, start for that team, get some numbers, get some notoriety, and rack up some stats. That's all really good. Like you said, we've got name value Trevon Diggs because of Stephon. He played at Alabama, which means he was on a national stage a lot during college. So name recognition, high-profile team, a good team that should win a lot of games, and an automatic starting role. When you're getting all that for 26-1, to 1, I'm pretty intrigued about buying it. You look back at past defensive Rookie of the Year award winners, you've seen a good number of corners get there in the not-so-distant past. It's a pretty wide-open award as far as which position does wind up winning it as, as opposed to things like MVP. So I'm going to go with a guy like Trevon Diggs here, talented player, interesting situation given the team he's playing for and the fact that they'll start on day one. I think that all adds up to be a really intriguing bet for 26-1. The fact that he plays the Dallas Cowboys is going to have that national spotlight. It's going to have a major role to start off the season. That's a lot of reasons to like Javon Diggs. All he needs is a couple of big games in primetime, and everyone's going to know his name. And it helps that his uh, older brother is already a successful NFL player. A lot to like about Javon Diggs, and it's what? This number 26 to 1, it's worth taking a shot on here, at least right now, when it's still early. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. I appreciate the time. Good luck with these bets. I appreciate it, Greg. Looking forward to talking some NASCAR next week with you. Should be a whole lot of fun, and uh, you're going to get to know a lot about that sport in the not-so-distant future. First League of Legends, now NASCAR. I'm ready, man. I'm excited to get into it. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Salsman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time, and stay safe, everybody.